completely. Uh, since I have missed uh, all the homework that was assigned, and I am planning to miss uh, all the homework that will be assigned, uh, I am doing this presentation to compete. And I am speaking in English, hoping that our professor will think my content less boring and more obscure uh, because he is listening uh, to an exotic language. So let's begin. Uh, symmetries and their consequences. I will be talking about symmetries, of course, um, which is defined as the invariance of the Hamiltonian under active or passive transformation. Uh, I will be talking about the consequences of symmetry, uh, namely the conservation of generators and the satisfaction of the two Hamilton's equations for the newly transformed variables. Uh, so I will end my presentation after pointing out the close resemblance between the canonical transformation in classical mechanics and uh, the unitary transformation in quantum mechanics. The first theorem I'm going to prove is this. Uh, consider this infinitesimal canonical transformation. And uh, if the Hamiltonian is invariant under this transformation, uh, then we say the generator, uh, this function g, is conserved. So to put it simply, if I'm the Pico and I'm standing here, and someone performed an active transformation, say a uh, rotation on me, so uh, I, I'm pushed to this angle, and surprisingly, I find out that my energy is the same as before. Uh, so I will conclude that my angular momentum is conserved. So to state clearly what is active transformation and what is passive transformation, and to remind those of you who, have, who doesn't remember any of that, I have this, um, so active transformation is the procedure where we move the point, we move the particle, and we keep the coordinate system as the same. Well, the passive transformation is the procedure where we fix the point, we fix the position of the point, and we change uh, the coordinate system instead. So uh, the position of the point never changes, but the expression of that position under this coordinate system changes. So if we go back to the theorem, it told us to move the particle uh, this way, and fortunately, this kind of movement, this kind of transformation, automatically satisfies this condition. It is automatically a canonical transformation. Uh, so a canonical transformation goes name from uh, the first definition I put here. You'll see Canonical <coughs> transformation is the transformation to preserve the form of the Hamilton's equation. And since the Hamilton's equation is sometimes called uh, canonical equations, so uh, it is, uh, this transformation is named to be the canonical transformation. Uh, the second de definition is exactly uh, equivalent to the first definition, only it is uh, written in a more mathematical form. Uh, this is the place in bracket. I assume you, uh, you all know what this place in bracket is. So this vanished, and this is the quantum delta. Uh, the proof of that first theorem is simple. Uh, by some theorem, we know the variation of the Hamiltonian is equal to zero. And uh, the variation of the Hamiltonian by chain rules is equal to this. Uh, this is the variation of QI, and this is the variation of PR, and we sum of R. And this, by definition, is equal to the patient record. And we, we have shown that the present pressure is equal to zero. Then uh, the, the real change of this function g is 
by chain root uh, equal to this, and, uh, and we, if we plug in the two kind of distortion, namely uh, the red chain of Q is equal to the positive derivatives of the Hamiltonian res with respect to QI, PI, and we plug into that. Oh, by definition, we got this case in record, and we have already shown that's equal to zero. So the rate of change is equal to zero, so G is conserved here in the uh, The second zero is this. Uh, if the Hamiltonian is invariant under a regular canonical transformation. Well, what I mean by regular transformation is if the original coordinate uh, ranges from, say, minus infinity to positive, positive infinity, then the new coordinate must also range from minus, coordinate, minus infinity to positive infinity. So the transformation that transforms Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates is not a regular coordinate. It is not a regular transformation. And if this, then, the solution of the transform is the transform version of the open solution. Uh, so uh, if you find this sentence a little bit, bit confusing, uh, there's no problem with you. Uh, this sentence is, uh, I invented that. So, uh, I just, I invented that sentence uh, to, uh, I, I'm concerned about the quantum version that I'm going to say. And since, uh, in quantum mechanics, the solution is obtained by the propagator, and the transform, uh, the transformation is obtained by the operator T. And what I'm saying here is, uh, you, uh, the propagator, and the transform operator T uh, commute. Uh, but uh, you can just ignore this. In classical case, uh, the result is this: is uh, the new, newly transformed variables satisfy these two Hamilton's equations. Uh, but with it, isn't it just the definition of canonical transformation? So why do, why do we have to prove this? If we go back to the, the definition of the canonical transformation, we see that canonical transformation is defined to be the transformation that preserves the form of the Hamilton equation. Unfortunately, uh, these two cases are not the same. Canonical, uh, what we are saying here is uh, this is meant to be a passive transformation of the coordinate. Well, what we have to prove in here is that it is an active transformation of the particle. Uh, so the proof is a can be simple. Uh, since we have already proved that G, the function G, the rate of change of G is equal to the facing bracket of G and H. And since G is just any function of uh, P and Q, and, and Q bar is just a function of P and Q. So uh, this the first equality holds. The second equality uh, holds by the following line of reasoning. I'm not sure it's correct. Well, I reason the, uh, the second equality as follows. Since the basic graphic is, is invariant under passive canonical transformation, uh, the, this is a known fact, uh, uh, just a known property of the basic graphic. Uh, that's certain. Uh, the second is that I believe the active transformation with uh, the H invariance is exactly equivalent to a passive transformation. So what I'm saying here is that if I rotate an angle and I find my, Hamilt my Hamiltonian, my energy is the same, which normally it wouldn't be the same, and my coordinate changes, my, uh, my energy is the same. So this active transformation with the H invariance is exactly the same if I'm just standing at my original point and the coordinate system rotate in the reverse direction, the same amount of angle uh, to this. So uh, my coordinate is that and my energy is the same. So I believe, I believe this is correct. 
And this result we have to follow. So if you admit these two conditions, uh, the, the third is the third statement is the case invariant is invariant under active canonical transformation with the ancient variance. So our uh, 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 the second, I reason, I argued that the second requires to hold. So we have already proved the result. That's our QED. But uh, of course, if you if you don't believe me, you can always prove it. Shit. <laughs> You can always prove it by a less creative method, uh, which is pure math. Uh, this, uh, it, I, said, I mean, it's too boring that I don't even want to read it. Uh, so uh, the first quality is the same as above, and this is by this is by the definition of the Pearson bracket. And we take this factor out, and this is by the invariance of the Hamiltonian, and this is. Uh, the chain rule of partial derivatives, and the second is the same, and we plug these two factors respectively in that the first equation, and we get this after some equation factors. And since uh, it is by some sort of economical transformation, uh, this term vanishes. Uh, this term equal to the clock of delta. So we get this, uh, which is exactly the same as I proved. Oh, that's Latin. Uh, I'll try this. Uh, Quad error demonstrandum, uh, which is what has to be proved. Uh, finally, we came to uh, the quantum mechanic uh, formalism. We have two choices whether we can perform an active transformation on the wave function so that uh, we act on the wave function uh, and operator T. Uh, which uh, very closely resembles the classical approach. Or we can just uh, act on um, this operator x and p, and in uh, this transformation, and uh, these two formalisms is exactly the same. But uh, in quantum mechanics, people always choose the second formalism because it is easy to manipulate uh, mathematically. Uh, so the first corresponding theorem uh, in quantum mechanics is uh, just the same as in classical mechanics. If H is there and under blah 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 blah. Under the, uh, the operator transformation, this, uh, where T is a unitary operator, this is very important. It has to be unitary or any of the results won't hold. Uh, and this unitary condition is automatically satisfied by this, where G is a generator. And our result is that the expectation of G is conserved. Uh, the proof of this, I think, is even more simple than classical. Uh, classical mechanics. Uh, we use the property of unitary operators, and then we use Aronfast theorem. I assume you all know what is Aronfast theorem. So the exact proof will be for you uh, to do in your homework. Oh, uh, look, whenever I don't want to uh, go, go through the trouble of approving something, I just leave, leave it as a homework for my student. Uh, the second corresponding theorem is, uh, is this uh, if the H is there, if the H is invariant, and if uh, if it go through through uh, a canonical regular transformation sort of thing. Uh, so uh, the essence of this uh, of the uh, of the proof of this theorem is to prove that T and U, T and uh, the propagator commutes, just like I already said. And the proof is uh, goes like this. If we apply uh, something we know that 
edges and variants. And now we can deduce that Tn h commutes. And since uh, the propagator can be ex expressed uh, as a series of the Hamiltonian, so uh, from this we, we deduce that uh, Tn, the propagator, commutes. And which is what happened to Kuben. Uh, finally, both uh, the analogy between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics is a very, a very similar. In classical mechanics, uh, the, canonical, the, the canonical transformation is the transformation that preserves uh, the phase and bracket. While in quantum mechanics, uh, the unitary transformation is the transformation that preserves uh, the commutation uh, relations. So uh, that's why I think uh, the non-core transformation has this fundamental role in classical mechanics just because uh, it's because the reason that it preserves the phase and bracket and same with uh, that. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you.